This is the biggest carbon-rich asteroid sample ever returned to Earth. Carbon and water are molecules. The carbon and water mo molecules are exactly the kinds of material that we wanted to find. They are crucial elements in the formation of our own planet. And they're gonna help us determine the origin of elements that could have led to life. Why are we doing this? Because at NASA, we are trying to find out who we are, what we are, where we came from. And this mission will help our scientists investigate planet formation for generations to come. And it's gonna deepen our understanding of our solar system. And it's gonna improve our understanding of asteroids that could threaten us here on Earth, helping us protect our planet. That nitrogen flow attached, the next day, Monday, September 25th, it was flown from Utah to Arlington Air Force Base and brought here to building those parts off to get a little further in so that we can then distribute that sample into um, bulk sample handling trays, which are triangular and look sort of like deep dish across the solar system. Please join me in welcoming NASA Administrator, Senator Bill Letson. From the formation of the first galaxies with James Webb, now we're looking at this and what you're seeing. And why are we doing this? Because at NASA, we are trying to find out who we are, what we are, where we came from, what is our place in this vastness called the universe. And this mission will help our scientists investigate planet formation for generations to come. Go to these smaller sizes. Benny seems to have this kind of fractal nature. And then finally, the last panel there, panel E, just shows two bill that leaked out of the tag sim when we flipped it over. Underneath that flap, there's a whole trap. Those are the water-bearing clay minerals, and they have this fibrous kind of structure. We call this serpentine, because they look like serpents or snakes inside the sample. And they have water locked inside their crystal structure. And I want to stop and think about what that means. That water, that is how we think water got to the Earth. The reason that Earth is a habitable world, that we have oceans and lakes and rivers and rain, is because these clay minerals, like minerals like the ones we're seeing from Bennu, landed on Earth four billion years ago to four and a half billion years ago, making our world habitable. So we're seeing the way that water got incorporated into solid material and then ultimately into planets, and not just Earth, but probably Venus and Mars also had abundant water as well. Like a raspberry and the one on the right are, are plate-like, and especially those platy ones might be really important for organic evolution. Proteins use sulfur to link uh, and provide those bridges. And then the bottom two there are iron oxide minerals called magnetite. Uh, why is carbon so important? Well, carbon is essential for all life on Earth. We are all carbon-based. Carbon forms bonds with hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and the sulfur to form Prebiotic and biological compounds are important. Amino acids that are part of our proteins and enzymes. We even look for nucleobases, components of the genetic code in DNA and RNA. So exciting stuff. Um, and one of the reasons we want to look for this material in these samples is to understand whether asteroids like Bennu could have not only delivered the water that led to our oceans, but actually seed the Earth with prebiotic chemicals, right? The building blocks of life. Um, and this was a big deal. Um, at the time this data came back, I mean, there were scientists on the team going, wow, oh my God. And when they say that, and the stuff's lighting up, you see carbon um, there in the center, just to the right, the kind of a light bluish fluorescence. That's from a carbonate mineral, so carbon locked up in this mineral grain. But then you see these small specks of light, looks like stars, right, glowing. This is organic matter, called these organic globules. 
And I know the analyst at the time who made this measurement said, you know, this thing's loaded with organics. I mean, again, just, you know, this is incredible material. And each of those different populations can tell us different things. Um, while it may be interesting to go back to Bennu, I think my, you know, my expectation is we're going to keep sampling different parts of that story, different types of apps. One of those samples that had been held in a pristine state that entire time, and just a couple years ago, we opened this exactly what we're going to see with uh, the Osiris Rex samples decades into the future. Thank you. All right, we'll go to the media. Help us prevent future asteroids from impacting the Earth. That's an excellent question. I'm going to take a stab at this. It turns out that when the sun is heating up one side of the asteroid and then the, the asteroid turns and rotates and that heat is radiated out into the dark space, that also puts a little tiny force on the asteroid. And that particular effect is called Yarkovsky effect. You can impress your friends with that later if you like. Um, but knowing what that little tiny force is and how that operates over a very, very long period of time is really important for helping us be able to predict when a particular asteroid might be dangerous. Uh, what we really want to know is if an asteroid is going to cross over Earth's orbit at the same time that we're in that place. And we want to not be in that place when the asteroid comes by. So being able to precisely predict that is really important.